Good morning. It is me, your humble, friendly neighborhood stroke assaulter. I'm going to do a letter of the day again. Uh, warning, this letter is going to be Z for zero. You can figure the rest of that's going to go. Get the kids out of the room. I say again, if there's wee people in the room you don't want to hear bad language with and have to explain why I say bad things, make them depart. You've been warned. And five, six, seven, eight. Okay, moving on. Now then. Z is for zero, meaning I have zero fucks to give. Um, had a wonderful session with my therapist yesterday. Says no one ever. Um, except I did. Um, and I realized that she'd give me some homework. And when I was down visiting... Uh, my brother, sister-in-law, and nephew, uh, I had an epiphany um, that I'm going to tell you what I need and you're going to kind of have to accept it. And they were very supportive and very accepting that when I went and told them, hey, I got to kind of go need a nap. I'm kind of shitty right now. They're they were brilliant, like excellent. I have no qualms or concerns at all with that interaction. However, there are going to be people in the world that aren't going to understand when I go to them and say, hey, listen, I need this, right? Because I'm post-stroke, um, and because of the stroke, I have this problem, and because of the problem that I have, I need this, and this is why I need it, and so because why I need this, I got to go do that, right? Um, you can't handle that? Not my problem. You're just a fucking horrible human being, so I have zero fucks to give about people's feelings about what I need. Um, that's not going to say I'm not going to try to be respectful, um, I'm going to be assertive, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm definitely going to tell you what I need and how I need it and why I need it. <clears throat> well, the why it should be obvious. I've had a stroke. Yeah, and because I've had a stroke, um, I might need to go for a nap. Um, I might need you to speak a little bit more slowly. I might need... Um, many things and i can't think of anything in specific and this letter of the day for zed hasn't been triggered by any one interaction with any one person um it was just an epiphany i had um both partly when i was down visiting my family um and the other part was yesterday with my therapist um i have zero fucks to give um and what exactly do i mean by that <clears throat> Well, you're either with me or you're not. There is no middle ground here. There's no gray area here. You're either going to support me in my rehabilitation, in my reintegration, in my recovery, or fuck you. Okay? You're either going to help me or fuck you. You're either going to be someone that can assist me while I assault through the objective of my stroke, or you're an obstacle. Obstacles get breached. I'm good... And it, it, it's very simple. I, I had to call um, my insurance today to have a conversation. And then I had to call WSIB today to have a conversation. And in both cases, I wasn't aggressive. Um, and I wasn't demanding. I was assertive. I said, listen, I had a stroke at work. Um, who covers what? Because there are certain things I'm going to need to facilitate a return to work plan. One of them being an occupational therapist that specializes in return to work planning. To assist me with my return to work. So, right now I'm trying to determine does my long-term benefits cover that or is the workman's WSIB people going to cover that. But either way, I let them know. Um... I need to know who pays for what, so I know who to have the conversation with. And I don't really care who pays for what, I just need to know whose budget does that come out of. And I wasn't sheepish about it or apologetic. Um, my aphasia did come out a little bit, simply because I'm kind of emotional about this. And I hadn't had enough of the go juice yet. Uh, so that being said... When it comes to your recovery, if you are a post-stroke person, and 
we're going to forgive the fact that you're probably out of the hospital, right? The primary hospital, that meaning the one where 911 took you, right? But then again, even when I was in the hospital, I had an event with the nurse. And at that point, again, I stood up for myself. I might have been a bit more than assertive simply because I was angry because she was actively not listening to me. Um, so I stood my ground. I got what I wanted. And what I wanted was what a certain doctor told me. And she was trying to tell me, no, a doctor didn't tell you this. And I'm like, uh, I might have had a stroke, but I might remember that. Um, and she wasn't happy the fact that I was standing up for myself. Um, so regardless of where you are in your post-stroke journey, be it you're still in the hospital, you're on a stroke step down, you are on a uh, neuro ICU, you are on um, ICU, you're on some kind of cardiac monitoring, you're on a general ward, you've gone to a rehab recovery reintegration facility, um, you're in nursing care. Thank God I didn't. I actually at one point seriously considered I might have to go to a nursing home for a while. Thank fuck that didn't happen. Um, you're at home like myself. And you are ambulatory, and on a good day you're able to get around, and you go to all your all, all your appointments on your own, right? I have zero fucks to give, right? This is my agenda. My agenda is getting back to work. Um, my agenda is getting me back to the day after my stroke, as if the stroke never happened. Um, back to work. Uh, my agenda is to go back to work and be productive and to be uh, an effective, constructive, contributing member to the team. That's my goal. If you are unable or unwilling to assist in that journey, I have zero fucks to give. I, you will need to learn that I'm going to make tracks over your back. Right? I'm just going to bypass you by going over you. Now, that is not to say I'm not going to be a blade. Now, for those of you that are ex-army, possibly Air Force or Navy, you understand what a blade is. A blade is it's someone that intentionally puts a blade in your back simply to get over on you, uh, either to make you look bad or to um, make themselves look better. That's a blade. I don't intend to be a blade. <clears throat> However, there are people that are going to perceive that I'm attempting to blade them. They do not have the emotional or the intellectual capacity to understand that they're useless, right? In that specific endeavor, in that specific event. So you're either going to give me the due respect and a little bit of dignity for what I'm trying to accomplish, right? And, and be an active participant in my rehab recovery and reintegration or zero fucks to give, right? I, I, I don't care what you think. Right? And for those of you that are post-stroke, the same should apply to you. Right? I, I don't care what people think. The only, the only major concern I have is I'm going to be perpetually perceived, mainly at my work, because I had my stroke at work, as the stroke guy. That is a concern. I'll deal with that when that time comes. But <clears throat> in regards to what you think about what I've been through? Well, if you haven't been in contact with me during the six months I've been off work, I don't care. <clears throat> if you haven't taken the time in six months to get in contact with me, because <clears throat> I'm not chasing people. I'm not chasing people to be like, oh, please hang out with me. Please talk to me. If, you're no, if you don't have some modicum of respect for, I've been through legitimately the most traumatic event that you're possibly going to go through as an individual in your lifetime. <clears throat> I had a stroke. Um, if you are unconcerned or you're going to belittle the fact or you're going to make assumptions about what my agenda is or, or, or the things I need to accommodate me to get me back to where I want to be, which is the day after I had my stroke, as if the stroke never happened, I have zero fucks to give. It's, it's about that simple. I legitimately don't give a fuck what you think, right? Um, I know you don't care. 
Um, and I know you're probably a fraudulent individual, if not just a horrible human. Uh, and I had this epiphany, right? You're either there to be supportive or you're not, right? Um, you're either there as an effective contributing member of my team or you're not, right? You, you are either there and willing to accept I'm going to have bad days. And the great thing is the bad days you can't predict, right? Now, I've kind of got a bit of a sinus cold. I find since the stroke, I get chilled a little bit more readily. <clears throat> that could be wonderfulness. Who knows? But you're either there to help me facilitate the growth, development, and change I need to make <clears throat> through this recovery, rehabilitation, reintegration journey, or you're not. And if, and again, there is no gray area here. You're either going to support me or you're not going to support me. Right? I'm gonna, going to, oh, sorry, I'm not a big fan of contractions, but I use them now since the stroke more than I did. Don't like contractions. I think they're for the lazy mind, but that's another story. <clears throat> that's okay. I had a stroke. My mind could be lazy now. Right? So, if you are going through your recovery journey from a stroke, and regardless where you are, six weeks, six months, six years post-stroke, there are people that have had a stroke and they were not as lucky as I was. Um, so, that is a thing, right? They did not have the good fortune that I did. Um, they are living a drastically altered life not like I am. <clears throat> My life is altered, don't get me wrong, but I don't have to have someone help feed me. Um, I don't have to wear a diaper. I'm not in a hospital bed for possibly the rest of my life in some description. Um, I can talk, usually well on a good day, difficult, more difficult on others. Right? Um, I still have decent range of motion. I still have you know, um, the abilities to do what I used to do. But for those of you you're going to set a goal, right? And that goal, again, as we've discussed before, and I'm going to do a thing on this, I'm still working on it, On it's a target. It's not a timeline, right? Post-stroke recovery, timelines are somewhat irrelevant. The targets are what's, what's, what is, is relevant, right? What do I want to do? Where do I want to be? <clears throat> so that being said, um, you're going to set a target and you're going to tell people this is my target and then you're going to gather together the people you need around you to get to that target and then you're going to create a plan to get to the target then you're going to work the plan this is when you start questioning the motives of people around you if they're not supportive with your target and i, I don't mean they're questioning your target to determine exactly what the target is and you know make help make step goals for the target and figure out how they can participate in that target right um, because people should be questioning you on your targets and how do you intend to do that what does that look like how can I help things like that you know, I, and some people are going to want to treat try to keep you honest which is also a beneficial thing hey is that the best target for you right now because I've had a really good friend question me on one of my targets um, when I wanted to try to return back to work, and she was right. And she was completely right. She questioned me on a target, um, and it was a target that I had set. And you know what? She was right. There's no way I could have fulfilled that target. I would have fallen on my ass, and then my face, and then my ass, and then my face again. And I'd look much uglier than I currently do, and I'd look like a fool, right? Um, but people that are going to question, why do you need this and why do you need that? Well, I need this thing to help me do this. And I need that thing to help me do this. And I need this thing to help me do that. So, because you're going to end up in multiple situations whereby um, you're going to need the assistance of professionals and the people around you. Professionals are easy to get. That's their job. People around you are going to be the difficult ones. You're going to have people that are going to not understand what you're trying to do. Um, partly because they either don't have the intellectual or empathetic capacity 
um, or they're just fucking horrible humans um, because they think you're looking for a pity party right, right when you're not. <clears throat> um, so, and this goes back to self-advocacy, right? Do not be afraid to advocate for yourself, right? Do not be afraid to come off as sounding demanding or assertive, right? Aggressive is another thing, um, and, and that may be necessary to display anger at an individual at times because they're not getting the fucking hint, right? Um, but generally, you're going to need to be assertive, um, and you're going to have to express to people that I need this, and this is why I need that, and this is how it makes me feel, and you're going to want to center the conversation on what I need, right? Not what you, the individual, I need from you, right? Not what you are doing, right? But what I need, the individual stroke assaulter, what I need, right? What I need, what I want, what I feel, right? <clears throat> make make the conversation about you, right? Um, that way the individual you're having the conversation with doesn't need to feel like they're being, uh, they're weathering a storm or they have to be defensive, right? Um, so that being said, and don't give a fuck, right? There's times you're going to need things that you're going to need things, right? And this is not the time to feel guilty or sheepish or or like you're a burden, right? This is the time to, to advocate for yourself, right? Be assertive and have zero fucks to give. I need this. This is why I need it. I need it because I had the stroke and this is exactly what I need. To, in, to make my recovery, my rehabilitation, and then my reintegration back into the world, the workplace, relationships, whatever the case may be. This is what I need to complete that last step. The recovery, you're going to pretty much do that in the hospital or at home. The rehab, again, you're going to do that at the hospital and at home and then with your appointments with professionals. Then you get into the last piece, the reintegration, and that's what I'm sort of starting that down that road, at least I hope I am. <clears throat> And I have zero fucks to give. So for the people that are out there, they're going to help the people that have had a stroke and try to keep them honest, right? By making sure that what you're doing is the right thing. Brilliant. For those of you that want to question every single motive, every single thing about the person who's had a stroke, fuck you. It's that simple. I have zero fucks to give, right? Again, you're either here or you're not. I don't care which one you pick, your actions, your attitude, your behaviors will pick for you. And then I will make that decision whether if I ever trust you again. Like, this, this is a simple, um, and I'll cover this in another letter of the day video. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to do that one. But you have zero fucks to give because right now, you know what? You get to be a little bit selfish. You had a stroke, right? And what the key piece is, is to get you through your recovery, through your rehabilitation, and then get you to that last piece, your reintegration, right? The reintegration post-stroke is the most important goal that you're ever going to have. Um, and when you're trying to do that reintegration, zero fucks to give. That's where I'm at, right? But again, doesn't mean be rude, doesn't mean be demeaning, doesn't mean be aggressive. It means you are straight, direct, you are blunt with individuals, you are assertive with individuals, and you tell them exactly what you need, why you need it, how you need it, where you need it, when you need it, because that is the best thing for you as being the stroke assaulter, right? And if they can't accept that, they're horrible humans. Get rid of them, right? Or um, if you can't get rid of them because they're kind of a functionary where you have to be, um, you immediately discontinue the conversation with them and you seek out their supervisor. It's that simple. You just go, like, tracks over the back, but don't be a blade. Don't be a blade, right? This isn't about being vindictive. This isn't about being, um, you know, trying to make you look better, them look bad. This is about getting your needs met and fulfilled in a respectful, dignified manner. That's exactly what this means. And on that note, we're going to end the letter of day. That was Z for zero. Unless, of course, you're in the States and that'd be Z, right? But we're going to go with Zed because I'm the Dominion of Canada. So, on that note, if you like what you've been watching over the last little over three months, please, 
like, share, subscribe with your friends. If you know someone that's currently going through either the supporting journey or the actual journey of assaulting through a stroke, please share this channel with them. Let them know. If there's something you want to see me cover in content, either leave a comment in the comment section down below or you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to be going through or you think someone around you is currently going through a stroke and they're displaying some of the warning signs or symptoms such as facial droop, uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, uh, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place them in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.